The brain controls vision, hearing, speech, thought, and various parts of the body. Cerebrovascular disease or conditions affecting the blood vessels in the brain can be life-threatening. With cerebrovascular disease, it is a battle against time, and unless the person is treated in time, they may die or be left with severe disability. Stroke is one of the three leading causes of death in Korea, along with cancer and heart disease. Around half the stroke patients end up with a disability, even if they are fortunate enough to survive. They may not be able to speak properly, suffer from limb paralysis, and so on. If not treated in time, the person will die or have to deal with a serious disability. That's why stroke must be treated as quickly as possible, but prevention is key. The human brain is largely divided into the cerebrum, cerebellum, and brainstem, and it is supplied with oxygen and nutrients from the heart via blood vessels. Cerebral infarction where blood vessels in the brain are blocked due to arteriosclerosis or arteriostenosis, and intracerebral hemorrhage where bleeding occurs due to rupturing of weakened blood vessels are referred to as stroke. Stroke often occurs suddenly with little or no warning. A person suffering a stroke may feel numbness or no sensation in one of the arms or legs or experience speech impediment or facial paralysis. Other signs include sudden and severe dizziness that makes walking difficult. A loss of vision in one eye or double vision. A severe headache, as if one took a blow to the head or vomiting. If any of these signs occur, the person should be taken to the ER immediately for immediate medical treatment. Stroke treatment is a battle against time. By conducting accurate exams as soon as possible to provide accurate treatment, it is possible to mitigate the symptoms or prevent them from deteriorating further. The golden time for stroke treatment is four hours after onset. So, the patient must be taken to the hospital within four hours for treatment. But with ICH, there is no golden time, and the patient must be taken to the hospital as soon as possible. One in every 60 adults will suffer a stroke in their lifetime. Cerebral infarction and ICH occur at a ratio of 3 to 1. The most common cause of a cerebral infarction is stenosis of blood vessels in the brain, resulting from narrowing of the capillary vessels. There is substantial narrowing of blood vessels on the right side. If this were localized, a stent could be used to widen the affected blood vessel, but it is widespread and you are experiencing repeated paralysis on the left side of your body. Drug therapy is more desirable option, but if it is not expected to be successful, surgery is recommended. I advise that you receive surgery. An antiplatelet drug or a drug for hyperlipidemia should be used to prevent the progression of stenosis. If drug therapy to prevent the progression of stenosis does not work and symptoms keep reoccurring, a procedure or surgery to widen the blood vessels may be performed. The most common method of surgery is stint insertion or balloon angioplasty. Prior to the stint procedure, cerebral angiography is performed. Based on a 3D model of the blood vessels in the brain, the required length and size of the stint are determined. Then a catheter inserted through a blood vessel in the thigh, all the way to the affected blood vessel in the brain, 
and a balloon is inflated inside the space to wad in the vessel. A stint is inserted into the space and it is expanded to allow the blood to flow smoothly. This procedure is performed using a state-of-the-art cerebral angiography machine, making it very safe. It, if it's difficult to wad in the constricted blood vessel, cerebral bypass surgery may be necessary. It is performed by connecting a healthy blood vessel from the scalp to the vessel that's not functioning properly due to blockage or constriction. A cerebral bypass involves connecting a temporal artery, supplying blood to the scalp to a blood vessel in the brain where there is inadequate blood flow to allow the blood to flow properly. It requires high precision because blood vessels that are less than one millimeter in diameter must be sewn under a microscope. Cerebral aneurysm is a weak, stretched spot on the wall of a blood vessel in the brain that bulges out like a balloon, and it is called ticking time bob inside the head. When it bursts, one third of the people will die on the spot. One third will suffer from permanent disabilities, and one third will be able to recover through treatment. Because this is a fatal condition, early detection through regular health checkups is more important than anything. If you have a family history of cerebral aneurysm or are 40 or older and have high blood pressure and experience a sudden headache as if you've been hit in the head, then I suggest a CT brain, MRA or MRI of the blood vessels. I believe that one of the biggest benefits granted by modern medicine is that with just a single brain scan, you will be able to eliminate the risk of suffering this condition that can lead to death or a serious disability. Cerebral aneurysm usually has no symptoms before bursts or ruptures, so it is important to undergo regular checkups for early detection. The treatment approach is determined based on the patient's age and health condition and the size and location of the aneurysm. You can see the bulging spot, which is the aneurysm. The ballooning of the blood vessel is caused by excessive pressure on the branches. A balloon that is not yet inflated is thick, but if it gets inflated, it becomes thinner. As blood flows through a weakened blood vessel, it may burst when the blood pressure suddenly rises or there is a sudden shock. As soon as it ruptures, the affected individual will experience a severe headache and may even collapse and will need to be transported to the hospital. You were very lucky considering we detected this before it ruptured. The objective of the treatment will be to prevent the aneurysm from bursting. The best way to decide on a treatment approach for cerebral aneurysm is conducting cerebral angiography. Cerebral angiography is performed by inserting a catheter through a blood vessel in the thigh all the way to the brain and injecting a drug into the catheter to check the condition of the blood vessel based on 3D images. Based on the results, it is determined whether to perform coil embolization or surgery or to observe the patient. If aneurysm is detected and treated before it ruptures, good results can be expected in more than 95% of the cases. A person diagnosed with cerebral aneurysm may be treated by clipping or coil embolization depending on the location, shape and size of the aneurysm and the blood vessel condition. Clipping requires opening the skull in the temporal region and using a microscope to reach the aneurysm and the aneurysm is tied using a clip. The surgeon doesn't invade the normal brain tissue but instead treats the aneurysm inside an intracerebral space. All aneurysms look different, so suitable clips can vary greatly. This is why aneurysm clipping must be performed by a highly skilled 
and experienced surgeon to prevent damage. Patients with unruptured aneurysms are typically discharged four to five days after surgery and can return to their normal lives immediately. Coil embolization, on the other hand, involves inserting a catheter into a femoral artery to reach the brain. And the abnormal blood vessel is filled with platinum coils that are less than one millimeter thick to prevent it from rupturing. This prevents the blood from entering into the aneurysm and causing expansion and bursting. Coil embolization does not require opening the skull, so patients usually recover very quickly. Patients with unruptured aneurysms are discharged a couple of days after the surgery and can return to their normal lives. What causes cerebral aneurysms? The exact cause is still unknown. However, family history, alcohol consumption, and smoking are risk factors, especially smoking. Those with hyperlipidemia, hypertension, or congenital or genetic disorder are at high risk. Are there no warning signs? Unruptured aneurysms are mostly asymptomatic. When it ruptures, you will feel a severe headache that you've never experienced before, like you've been hit by a hammer. In rare cases, double vision or droopy eyelids may occur, even if it hasn't ruptured. Is it possible to carry out day-to-day -day activities with treatment? The success rate of treatment is more than 95%. If surgery is successful, you'll be able to return to normal life immediately after being discharged. What happens if it is left untreated? The chance of an aneurysm rupturing within a year is 1%. But the probability increases as it continues to grow. Do patients have to follow up after treatment? There is a possibility of recurrence, albeit rare, and a new aneurysm may occur in a different area, so regular checkups are a must. Are there foods that can help prevent aneurysm? There aren't foods that can fully prevent it, but the kind of diet recommended for hypolipidemia and hypertension patients can help significantly. Can't treatment be performed at the same time as cerebral angiography? Cerebral angiography is usually performed under local anesthesia. Based on the results, a thorough treatment plan is created, and treatment is performed under general anesthesia. So the examination and treatment are performed simultaneously. Is there a way to manage aneurysms? Alcohol abstinence, smoking cessation, blood pressure, and hyperlipidemia management can help prevent aneurysms from developing and worsening. Those with aneurysms must avoid strenuous exercise that can raise intracranial pressure. The most important thing is to undergo health screening at a hospital on a regular basis. Professor Shin Yong Sam is Korea's first hybrid surgeon, who is an expert in neurosurgery and interventional radiology. He is a leading authority on treatment of stroke, aneurysms, and other cerebral vascular diseases, as well as minimally invasive intracerebral vascular treatment. He takes the most ideal treatment approach for each patient, based on his extensive knowledge and experience. Stroke can be fatal. I take pride in the fact that treating patients from this life-threatening condition that can cause death or a severe disability and saving their lives is a way for me to uphold God's command to respect life. With an understanding of the importance of timely treatment for cerebral vascular disease patients, Dr. Shin closely observes his patients around the clock and tirelessly conducts research to advance medicine with a commitment to save lives.